In this math talk, we introduce the concept of a composite number. And simply stated, a composite number is a number greater than one that is not prime. And so if you go back through our old videos or our earlier videos, you would know some prime numbers. For example, some prime numbers less than 10 would include 2. That was our only even prime. 3, 5, 7, and that would be it beneath 10. Now, just getting back to what we mean by a prime number, a prime number has exactly two different factors. One and itself. And what I mean by two different factors is that it is evenly divisible by two numbers only. For example, if we just take a look at that 5, 5 can be divided by 5 and we get 1 with no remainder, nothing left over. Or 5 can be divided by 1 and we get 5 with no remainder. Or simply stated, 1 times 5 is equal to 5 and there's no other pair of natural numbers that we can multiply together to give us 5. So it is prime. Now let's consider 9 which was not in the group of primes less than 10. 9 itself can be written as 1 times 9 or it can be written as 3 times 3. So we would say that 9, in fact, has factors of 1, 3, and 9, or it's evenly divisible by 1, 3, and 9. It is not prime by our definition, and in fact, it is composite. So this number here is composite. Composite. Now you may be asking a big question at this point. Well, a, a composite number is a number that's divisible by more factors than just one in itself, and a prime number is divisible only by itself and one. Well, what's the big question about one? Is it prime? Is it composite? It is neither. It is neither composite nor prime. So in fact, one is a very special number in that it doesn't fall into either of those categories. Now, let's consider some questions where we break down composite numbers into what we would call prime factors. So our question is, write 245 as a product of prime factors. Well, we begin this way. We take 245 and we try to find two numbers that would multiply to give me 245. Well, because 245 ends in a 5, I know it's evenly divisible. It's a multiple of 5. So I'm going to write down my two factors as 5 and the other factor, 5 times what, gives me 245? Well, that's 5 times 49. Now we know from our earlier discussions the 5 is prime. So we will leave that alone as just a 5, but we recognize that 49 was not in our group of prime numbers less than 100. And so we can break that down into two factors that actually are the same, a 7 times a 7. And so in the end, we would write that 245, 245 is the product of a 5 times a 7 times a 7. We would call that the prime factorization of 245. That could be written in a more compact fashion, which is 5 times 7, and we'll put a 2, an exponent 2, on the 7. So we're really saying that 245 is built from 1 5 multiplied with 2 7. So 245 is 1 5 multiplied by 2 7s. Now it's worth stopping and thinking of an analogy here. I look at the prime numbers and composite numbers the same way I look at letters in our language and words in our language. The um, letters of our language build our words. We use our 26 letters to construct our words. Well, we use our prime numbers to build our composite numbers. The one difference is there is no limit to the primes. There's an infinite number of primes. 
and obviously an infinite number of numbers. Uh, but they are all built. Any composite number can be built from primes. Let's try a larger one and just see how this goes. So now we're trying to write 7,200 as a product of prime factors. Once again, I'll start with my 7,200, and I will try and split that into two convenient numbers. Um, and that's not too hard to do. With 7,200, I'm thinking that's a 72 multiplied by 100. That to me is most convenient. Well, clearly, neither 72 nor 100 are prime. They're both even, uh, so we can work and break those further down. So they're both composite. I will break 72 into 9 times 8. And the 100 I will break into, nice and conveniently, 10 times 10. And so 7,200 can also be written as 9 times 8 times 10 times 10. But once again, we are not, we are not yet dealing with prime factors. 9, 8, 10, and 10 are all composite numbers still. So I can break the 9 down. I can break the 8 down. And I'm going to show three factors of 8, 10, and the other 10. And so it will look like this. 9 can be broken down into 3 multiplied with 3, and both of those numbers are now prime. The 8 can be written as 2 times 2 times 2. The 10 can be written as 2 times 5, and the last 10 can be written as 2 times 5. Now when you look at the numbers, I just have 3's, 2's, and 5's. Those are all prime. So as we write our final statement about 7,200, in other words, as we write it as a product of primes, we would say, and I'm going to put them in order from smallest to largest, I would write it as 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, because there were five of them. If you just want to double check here, there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 of them. Then I would continue by saying 3 times 3 because there were 1, 2 of those and finally 5 times 5 and there were in fact 1, 2 of those. So now in a more compact fashion like we did with 245, I'll say 7,200 is 5 2's multiplied together. That means 2 to the exponent 5 multiplied by 2 3's multiplied together. So that would be 3 to the exponent 2. And finally, 2 5's multiplied together. So that's 5 to the exponent 2. So in fact, 7,200 is built from 5 2's multiplied together, 2 3's multiplied together, and 2 5's multiplied together, all as a product. And so once again, you really only have three types of factors here, a 2, a 3, and a 5, and they multiply to give you 7,200. So those prime numbers act as the building blocks. Just as a side note, I would say, hey, if we were to take a word like Canada, We might say that it's been built from three A's, one C, one N, and one D. Uh, much the same way 7200 is built from uh, a selection of prime factors. That's all there is to prime factorization and composite numbers, and I'm out of time.